Hello and welcome to the GFM podcast. I'm your host Zachary Mavrakis, and joined with me today is my dear friend and singer Evangelia. How are you doing today? Hi Zachary, I'm doing really well. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for coming on. Before we get into the music, we've been following each other on TikTok for a while now. Did you want to tell the viewers how we met? Yes. Um, so if I remember correctly, you had posted a TikTok listing your top 10 favorite Greek singers. Right. And this came up on my For You page, naturally. And I was like, huh, I would love to be on his next list. So I put a comment and I was like, hey, hope I'll be on your list next time you check in and make this. And that's how we connected and you discovered, I think you discovered me that way. I don't know if you knew of me before. Yes, actually I did not, but <laughs> honestly, okay. after, <laughs> after listening to your music, definitely on my top 10. Yay. <laughs> Maybe next time I'll make the TikTok, I'll put you number one. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Since we're on the theme of t TikTok, and this is typically a sports podcast, I've noticed you posted some stuff playing soccer, and yes. I was wondering, what made you transition from soccer into the music world? So I love soccer. I grew up playing since I was in kindergarten. My dad coached my brother, and I was like, I want to do that too. Then he ended up coaching me. Um, and it was a huge part of my life. It was like I, I breathed soccer. I played travel soccer um, in New Jersey. And I thought I was going to play in college. But what happened was when I was 16, I tore my ACL in, in a game. Um, so then I had to have the surgery. And basically after that, I was like, you know, I, I love soccer and I want to play, but I'm not going to take it as seriously anymore. Um, right. So I played on teams and when I was in college, I played on the club team um, and I did intramurals even after college. Uh, and Amazing. now I feel like I have a soccer ball in my backyard and I'm always juggling. Um, but what I will say is that injury, as sad and tough as it was, if it didn't happen, I think I would have really tried to go the route of playing in college. And that would take up a lot of time <laughs> um, for sure. For sure, and kind of overtake my life would probably be school in that. Um, but through that injury, I found the love of something else, which was music. I had more time now that I wasn't taking soccer so seriously to focus on music. And that led to in college hosting open mic nights and being really involved in that and starting to write songs. And then here we are today and I still play soccer, but um, yeah. Amazing. And what inspired you to get into music and specifically modern pop with a Greek twist? Yeah. so. I'd, it wasn't until the last couple of years that I started incorporating the Greek into the modern pop twist. Right. Um, prior to that, I was just writing, it was just me and my guitar in my room and I'd perform at open mic nights and, and perform in New York. And then when I started to take music more seriously, which was when I got laid off from my job, I used to be a full time oh, wow. teacher. Um, and that's what I went to college for. I went to Rutgers, had my master's in special ed. I was a legit teacher <laughs> and I would teach by day and by night I'd be in New York and doing the whole thing. And then there were budget cuts in my district. So I was laid off and it was a huge blessing though, because I didn't have to make the decision to quit. It was kind okay. of made for me and like, Hey, here's your out. If you want to maybe not look for a job right now and give music a try. And that's what I did. And during that time, I had to really be very, I had to really figure it out. And what I realized when I then met the love of my life and the, my co-writer and producer, um, Jay Stolar, we started kind of talking and he was like, you talk about Greece all the time. You're always listening to Greek music. You Greek dance, even by yourself, you put it on. Like, this isn't expressed in, in your music. And I was like, you're right. And I had, and I had always had like the thought in my head, what if I like used Greek instruments and made a beat, but it was just something like that. And right. those little ideas then formed into, we should show producers we work with Greek music and write inspired by it. Um, and then, yeah. And then Jay learned how to play bouzouki and the rest is history. <laughs> Amazing. Yes. Now, we'll move on to some numbers on Spotify. You currently have 1.3 million listens on Pame Pame and over 800k listens on Fotia. What do these songs mean to you? And do these numbers show you how much of an influence you have on this modern Greek pop? Yeah, um, 
Thanks. I love these two songs. And Bama Bama in particular was the first song that really clicked of like, whoa, we have something really special here. And I felt right. so proud to say Bama Bama in a song. I just hadn't heard it that way before. And I don't know, thinking about a young Greek girl in America or Australia or wherever in the world to hear a song come on the radio that's in English, but then you hear Pamit Pamit, like that's so cool. <laughs> like I thought, sure. about, I thought about like younger me. So that song I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of. And I think it was my story of like Pamit Pamit, like let's go, I am doing this. And you guys can right. come along for the ride. If you have a dream, do it, Pamit, let's do it. You know, and that, that's kind of like the feel good vibe of it. And that's how I see it for me in my life as my debut of like, all right, I'm, I'm really doing this. <laughs> um, and then Fotia is a really special song as well. Wrote it actually right after I signed my record deal. I'm, I'm with Sony Germany. And so I was out in Berlin and they set up a session with this guy, Alexis Troy, who's half German, half Greek. So it was oh, really nice. special walking into a room and he like has lived in Athens. And so we were talking like right away. I was like, wow, we're family, cool. That's how it always is when you meet a Greek person. Exactly. And um, and Jay was there and we wrote Fotia and it felt like it, a big, it was a really big moment for me because I had just signed the deal and it was going, it was like marked a special time in my life. Um, and I was really excited to share that song. And I guess regarding the numbers, I try not to pay too much attention to them, to be honest. And to, right. like when there's a when there's a big, you know, when you hit the million mark, like that's so cool for me. And for um, sure. especially, you know, this year was my debut. I signed my deal February of last year, and then the world shut down. So I've kind of just right. been during all of this. So seeing those numbers does make me feel really good. That all right. I'm still connecting to people. Like I might not be able to do shows right now or see a lot of people, but they're, the songs are resonating. And uh, yeah, I just, I look forward to meeting more people like you and connecting with more people. For sure. And on the topic of connecting with fan base and people like myself on Spotify and TikTok, how would you connect or use these platforms to connect with people like this? Um, well, I guess sort of in the way that we connected, right? Like I just, right. I was like, oh, this kid's Greek. He likes Greek music. Like, let me comment on this video. Um, so just kind of like, I think not being too proud in, in a way right. and, um, really being down to earth in the sense of like, you, I want to connect with, with people. And, uh, I'm especially, I'm especially interested in, in connecting with Greek people around the world, like right. not just from Greece, but you know. I think my music has the ability to kind of bring us all together in that sense because it, it's got like two worlds blended and it's, it's right. sort of in, in that way. Um, so yeah, I like, I try my best to respond to every single comment and I love with TikTok the ability to also reply with video. Yes, the, so the best. <laughs> it's really cool. So I've started, I've started doing that. Those do take a while. So I, I'm not as fast at doing that, but I've started re responding with video to some questions and you know, just, just connecting as much as possible. Yes, that's amazing. And if you had to choose either one of your songs that represents you best, which one would you choose and why? Hmm. That's a tough question because they both represent, obviously that's why they're my songs. Right. But I think, uh, my answer is I can't choose because that's like asking to choose uh, one of my favorite child children or whatever <laughs> right um so i'm not gonna choose but i'll tell you why each one is very special to me bama bama is a very special place in my heart because it was the first song um again that clicked like i said and right. i shot the music and the music video to me is so special because i shot it in kriti in my hometown right. in at my yaya's farmhouse so oh, my yaya is not with us anymore she passed away four years ago um, but I wanted to show, especially with this being my debut song, like where this influence is coming from and to show right. like where, where I'm from. And so I shot the video in my jazz farm. You'll see me playing soccer in the music video too. Um, and I'm with the sheep, I'm in the chorio, I'm 
in Hanya, the city that I love so much. And then I also threw a party in my village for people of all ages. And you see that at the end, we're all like Greek dancing. We're having a great time. It's just really just showing Jeffy. And that is so special to me that it's like home. It feels like right. home. I like tie it with the visual. And then for Tia, I feel like was my next step into showing like where this influence could go and be a little bit more artistic and a little bit more a little bit of a darker energy to it, which is exciting to show that side to me. Um, yeah, so I love them both so much. <laughs> Amazing. Now, how is having Cretan roots influenced this sort of music that you've been creating? Totally. Well, as you see, I have my, I have my Minoans t-shirt on. I always wear it. Um, so I grew up with musicians from Kriti in my home. Right all the time because my father was a cultural chairperson for the Pan Cretan Association of America since wow. as long as I could remember. So he was always bringing over different concerts, cultural events, plays, theater stuff, and everybody would always stop when they were in our city, right. usually stay in our home or we would do something to host them. So I was always growing up around this music, um, not just in Greece, but also in the US, like in my right. home um, and connecting with these musicians and also just growing up Cretan dancing, doing the Kritikus Chorus, like, I don't know what it is about Cretan folk dancing, but it's just like in my bones and I love it so much. I can't even fully explain it. And whenever I've been in Kriti and like a Panigiri, everybody's like, where did you learn how to dance? I'm like, right. America, kind of like, and they're like <laughs> but it's yes. just, I don't know. I feel like I was like reincarnated. I have a, such a deep love for it that it's kind of, I can't really fully explain it. Right. Um, so now bringing that into my art um, in some of the new music that will be coming out this year, uh, we're actually hiring some musicians from Crete and Greece oh, wow. in general. Like there's gonna be some lira, um, depends on the song and, and what the vibe is, but right. definitely pulling on like specific influences from Crete. And I also like music wise, and then also when I think about my dance and my choreography and how I want to present my music visually, I definitely am taking influence from Cretan folk dance. Right. And like you shouldn't be surprised if you see people like in a line doing some stuff to, you know, to my music with their with their arms up. I've taught my choreographers, but those are these people, they know the dances. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. That's great. And yeah. who is your biggest supporter and why? Well, that would be my partner. Jay for for sure, Jay Solar. Um, he believes in me and wants me to achieve everything that I that I want. Um, right. And and aside from that, like our creative synergy together is just unparalleled for me because it's like when you're with somebody who you trust so much and you're both creating something and you're putting so much love into it. There's just uh, there's nothing better. So it's just awesome to like work with my best friend and like make art. It's amazing. It makes so it easier. So much easier. Yeah. And then of right. course my mom's my biggest fan. Of and course. now my dad, my dad's a fan too. He, <laughs> it, it took my dad a while because he was like a you know, tough Greek immigrant dad who was like, you need to get a real job, have a real paycheck. Right. Do not take this crazy risk. That's crazy. Um, but then I took the risk and now he's really happy about it. <laughs> Amazing. And if you had to choose one Greek musician and one American musician that has influenced your career path, uh, which two would you choose? Mm. So for American, uh, somebody I was, that just really got me started in singing and writing music in general is Ingrid Michaelson. I don't know if you okay. know of her, but um, she's very like just acoustic and sing along. But when I heard her songs in high school and they were just on a ukulele and her voice and a melody, it just felt so accessible to me. And I was like, wow, wow. I think I can do that too. And it inspired me to start writing songs. And I would say that now my, my music doesn't necessarily sound like it comes from that influence, but right. that's what really got me started. So that. Ingrid Michaelson holds a very special place in my heart. Um, and then Greek, 
I would say, I would say she's in, she's kind of new. Um, Marina Sati. I don't know okay. if you know her. She yes. does. Yeah. So I love what she has done with taking the old and combining the new um, as well. And she does that completely, you know, in her own way. Um, okay. And I just really admire that and I admire her musicianship, musicianship but yeah, I love all, all of the old classic Greek composers like Theodoraiti and Manos Loizos and all of, all of those people. Yes, all the legends. Yeah, all the and legends. I, yeah, they're, they're influences. Yes, and I know you briefly touched on this before, but what are your plans for the rest of 2021? And will we be seeing any new tracks or potentially an EP? Yeah, so um, definitely new tracks and potentially an EP. Um, okay. Yeah, I have also had to be very patient. Um, it's just a hard, it's a, it's a weird time right now to be an artist um, right. in this world. It's a weird time for everybody, but for sure, I've been working really hard behind the scenes. And even though I haven't been releasing stuff, trust me, there's so much to share and I'm just waiting for, for the right time, but it's definitely coming. Um, and yeah, you might get a little, a little package project from me. The the <laughs> Can't wait to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Well, that is all the time we have today. Thank you very much for your time, Evangelia. I appreciate it tremendously. It was a pleasure to have you on the podcast. Oh, thank you so much. It was so fun hanging out and talking to my TikTok friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so be sure to check Evangelia's links down below in the description.